Okay, and, and Michelle, just quickly, uh, oh, I guess just how important is tax planning? Well, I think it's really important because it's, it, it, it does a couple of things. I think planning at this time of year obviously is for tax savings and, and doing all those sort of things, but also focus people back on their business as well because the, the, the doing your account sort of you know, 12 months, 18 months after the fact doesn't help you in, in looking at your business on a regular basis. So if you're running a business in particular, you know you should, as um, Daniel said, you know you're looking at it on a quarterly basis. It's much more effective in order to make a decision, particularly when we're looking at downturns in economies and things like that. In order to catch, you know, cash flow problems or other issues, you need to be looking at it much more currently. And doing it, you know, 12 months after the fact when you're sitting with your accountant is is not a really good way to manage your business. So tax planning also does that as well. It, it gives the accountant time to have a look at your nine months or ten months results and say well hang on there's a couple of things here that we also need to fix up one issue is in, in particular is division 7a which is the private company loan rules mm -hmm. which is where we you know you have the case where the, the you've got a company and your shareholders and because you because people think they're one and the same they think that if they just take money out of their company, it's already their money. Well, they don't understand that there's tax consequences of doing that sometimes. So they need to remember they're wearing different hats at different times. So by coming to your accountant before you rent, they're able to help you clear up those issues before they become one. So I think that's a really good idea in terms of tax planning and why you should see your accountant before 30 June. Great. All right, we do tonight. Amal from Canberra. Amal, what's uh, your question for Michelle and Daniel? Uh, my question is uh, to the expert. Um, I'm uh, doing share trading for last few years, but this particular year I have lost a significant amount. Now I'm also uh, employed, um, so my my salary from the work and my losses are normally offset each other. Um, it's all my dividend and capital gains or losses are treated as like expenses or income. So what my question is that this year my uh, income um, is less and my losses are more. Um, now, is it possible that, um, that my losses can be carried over to next year and then those losses can offset from the next year's salary? Uh, that's my one question. Uh, Second is also related, the money I have lost, I borrowed from the bank against my house. Now, on that money, I will be paying continuously interest. Is that interest tax deductible until I pay back that amount? Thank you. Okay, some uh, some big questions there. I guess uh, something a lot of accountants, uh, I'd assume, being presented with uh, this year. M Michelle, if we could start with with you about uh, the, the first question about whether the loss can be carried over to the next year. Well, assuming this is a share trading loss, so that uh, I think from what I was understanding that you're a regular trader and this is a, a business activity as opposed to being an, an investor and on a capital gains tax account, then this loss would be a revenue type of loss and that if if there is excess losses left over after applying those against the income, then yes, they can be carried forward into the next year and offset against income in future years. Um, this was the only um, quarantine I'd put on that was whether we had issues with non-commercial loss rules. But I would suggest that if, you, if you're trading regularly, you would have more than 20 grand worth of trades um, and then therefore be able to offset those losses. Okay. And on Amazon